Okay. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the Genetic Genius Podcast. I'm so excited to have you as a guest today. Thank you so much, Dr. Lulu. I'm excited to be here. Yay. We're going to be exploring so much about spirituality today. We're going to rock these women's world. <laughs> <laughs> I am here for that. Yay. Totally. Um, first, let's, before we dive super deep in to this awakening that's going to be happening, let's just learn about you and how you got started on your journey, where you're at, what you're doing on the planet. Cause I know you have a beautiful story to share with everyone. Thank you so much. Um, where do I begin? Um, so ever since I was little, I really knew that there was more to this life. Like I knew there was more to the earth. You know, I felt really deeply connected to animals, to people's emotions, to feelings. So growing up, I was very, very sensitive. I would literally pray every night for every being on the planet to be safe and cared for by the morning. So I just had this really empathic heart and uh, I was very outgoing up until school age. So up until five years old, my mom tells me I would go and meet other people and just be very social and outgoing and loving life. And then school started. And as we know, right, societal norms started happening and I just felt like I was in a box. I felt um, my spirit, looking back now, I felt my spirit kind of clamp down and shut down and realize, oh wait, this isn't safe. Like we're not really allowed to be who we are and say how we feel and we have to abide by school rules and you know, just the societal norms of being a human that are so um, interwoven in our culture. And I had friends growing up, um, you know, I wasn't completely isolated, but I always felt different. I always felt that I was an old soul. I always um, would look at peers and just not understand mm -hmm. everything that was happening. Um, you know, school gossip in high school, you know, being bullied at times because I wasn't that, I, I kind of rebelled. I didn't really care to be popular or care to be, you know, this in this world of, of fake. Like I just saw right. everything as fake as not real. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, growing up, my mom would always teach my sister and me, you know, we are sensitive. Uh, we, we get to empower ourselves. Like my mom would do a lot of now they're mainstream, but very spiritual things like cleansing our home mm -hmm. and um, doing rituals on like New Year's and saging and all these things. So I realized like, oh, wow, we are, we, we are spiritual. We have these gifts, but I can't really talk about it. So I felt like mm -hmm. I was in the spiritual closet a lot of my life, mm -hmm. not even realizing it. Um, you know, I, I just... I had one girlfriend in, in high school that we would talk about witchy things together, but I'm like, we can't talk about this in, <laughs> in the real world. People are going to think we're crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I always just had an inner knowing, just always very highly sensitive, uh, pick on, on people's emotions, going into a room, just feel the energy, um, feeling very depleted in my twenties, mm -hmm. went through bouts of depression, anxiety, now realizing, wow, that was probably other people's energies entering my field. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just the normal 20, 20 to 30 decade right. thing going on, <laughs> toxic relationships. Um, and then, you know, I, I would always dip into like meditation or mm -hmm. um, even my coworkers, like I would bring sprays with me to like cleanse our room. So people knew me as having grounded energy as mm -hmm. being, you know, sage advice for others, but I wasn't empowered. I didn't see myself as someone people could, um, come to. I didn't see myself as a leader. I didn't, mm -hmm. I was very much in my comfort zone. You know, I was a speech therapist. I still am a speech therapist part-time. Mm -hmm. Um, so helping, helping others mm -hmm. always, always guiding others without really doing much, just having that in the, in the advice and, and motherly instinct. Um, and then we moved, my partner and I moved, he got a job in San Francisco. 
Mm -hmm. from New York. So I grew up in New York City as well during that time, which as we all know, it's very overstimulating. I had 31 (laughs) years in New York. Um, And it once we moved to San Francisco, I always had that free spirit, but I just never saw myself jumping out of that comfort zone, Mm -hmm. even though I had it. So we moved and that uh, created this awakening. It's almost two years actually. Uh, Well, August of 2018 is when we moved. And I just became really exhausted at work. I was giving my power away. I was Mm -hmm. not taking care of myself. I was not realizing how my energy and how I expended my energy was affecting me. Mm. And around two years ago, this, this time, mid-October, I was really sick. I was mm. having like my third cold or flu of the, of the school year. I was in elementary school and there was just something in me that was like, we are done. Like, mm. I guess my spirit <laughs> was starting to come in and be like, we're done. Like we get to empower ourselves. And I signed up for a Reiki session. I didn't mm-hmm. know this woman from a hole in the wall. Antoine Yelp. She is now one of my mentors. Um, and that was the beginning of this journey of, of me now in this now moment of really stepping into my purpose and stepping into empowerment and creating sisterhood and mm. creating an energy healing practice for others to empower themselves and Mm. to find their inner guru. So, (laughs) yeah. Oh, what a beautiful story. You know, it's, it's such an amazing aspect when, when we have the dream, that's like the little seed or the little, you know, the little voice in the, on the shoulder or the background, right. That says, you always wanted to do this. Right. And then finally somebody says, yeah, you better do it. This is it. We're drawing the line. (laughs) which yes. is I guess part of the awakening. <laughs> I have chills as yeah, you say turn, that because yeah. it is, it's always the breadcrumbs, right? Mm-hmm. Looking back, mm-hmm. I'm sure you had them as well. It's mm-hmm. these nudges from either, you know, our spirit or spirit guides or higher self or what the universe and whatever you believe in, because it's all the same, mm-hmm. um, that are just nudging us along. It's time. It's time to right. come out of the closet or it's time <laughs> to step up and lead and heal yourself first mm-hmm. and then begin teaching others what you've learned. Um, yeah, that's it's it's really that part of the journey. I think when you realize that it's like you're afraid a little bit, I think, you know, of being like, Oh, can I really teach others? <laughs> Is this what I can do? You know? And I think that's part of it. Like you said, that, that empowering part, which we won't give too much away, but we're going to talk about that more in detail. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so let's dive into a little bit. So today we're going to be discussing the awakening or what is an awakening and more in detail. So our listeners can kind of understand what that really means and why it's important to listen as we were just talking about listening to that inner voice, what, why it's so prevalent right now too, I think is important for us to discuss as well. And then we're also going to talk about the energetic aspects of activating the DNA, which I think will be super amazing for our listeners to hear too. Um, so let's first, if we can talk about just like the basic energetic system, because I know that, you know, there's all those different thoughts of process. So like, what's the energetic body, you know, for our listeners who might know what that is, or it might be vague for them, <laughs> but if you can describe kind of what that is for the for listeners that might be new to this thought process. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So we are energy our bodies are energy you know we are the same as the trees the same as the grass the same as the animals Uh, in western society we are taught that we are not and that's a whole nother topic right but (laughs) our energy bodies you know in the beginning it's our chakra system so i had briefly heard about chakras before my first reiki session Um, but I I didn't really give too much thought to it. And our chakras are, we have seven primary in our, in our body, but we actually have over a hundred minor 
chakras. So our chakras are energetic wheels and centers that are placed throughout our physical vessel and they are energy, right? So we cannot see them, but if you can think of someone's aura, right? People go, go and get their auras read or photos of auras. That's mm-hmm. kind of the auric field, right? That mm-hmm. we have many feel many layers of energy. And with that photo, you can kind of see one layer and you can kind of describe how your energy is. Mm-hmm. So the chakras, we have seven primary ones. And this is where Reiki comes into where because of our society, when the energetic wheels, when the chakras are blocked, that causes depression, right? Mm-hmm. That causes anxiety, mm-hmm. that causes uh, sickness, that causes um, being lethargic, all these different things because each of the chakras has a purpose. Mm. Um, and so our seven ones, right? Our crown chakra is mm-hmm. the top of our head, right? And that kind of connects us to the spiritual world or the universe, however you want to call it, but it connects us to that higher, higher self, higher purpose of something outside of us, Mm. right? There, Mm -hmm. when people believe in coincidences, when people believe in synchronicities, when things happen for you and you kind of feel tapped into the universe, it's your connection, your crown chakra connecting, kind of like an antenna. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I always say this for people that are new to understanding Reiki. When you are thinking of a loved one or a friend or a partner, whatever, right? You're thinking of them and then they text or call you. Mm, right. <laughs> that is your antenna going out to wherever they are and attaching to their antenna. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of that ESP mm-hmm. um, and it's energy. It, it's not even, it, it just, it's pure energy. So our, then our third eye chakra is um, between our brows and that's mm-hmm. our intuition, right? That's the energy center of our intuition of seeing the world differently than with mm-hmm. our physical eyes, mm-hmm. you know, tapping into that, inner knowing that gut feeling of this is wrong or this is right or and we all have it it's just a matter of if we listen to it or not Mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people I think of even 9-11 right that intuition of people oh I I stayed home that day or Mm -hmm. I didn't take that flight Mm -hmm. that was their intuition that was their spirit saying hey it's not your time yet Mm -hmm. so it's it's really fascinating when we get to bring in that spiritual and, and logical together because energy is, it can be logical as well. Right. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that we have our throat chakra, which is um, expression, right? How mm-hmm. we speak. My throat chakra is actually very blocked mm. up until two years ago. No one would believe that because uh, <laughs> I I'm on my Instagram all the time speaking. I'm doing workshops and courses, and our throat chakra is how we express and how we communicate our mm. needs, our desires. Mm-hmm. How are we speaking our truth? Right. Um, which a lot of us this year, our throat chakras are opening because of what's happening in our world, right? Mm -hmm. We get to speak our truth. We get to honor ourselves and open that throat chakra. Then we have our heart chakra, Mm -hmm. which is um, in the middle of our chest. And that's a portal of unconditional love, Mm -hmm. of compassion, of kindness, of seeing yourself in everyone that you meet, Mm -hmm. you know, seeing yourself as the mirror. So if we are self-judging, if we are self-critical, then that means we're probably being very critical of others in our lives or judging others in our lives. But when we begin to tap into our heart chakra and feel vulnerability and allow ourselves to open up to that love, then we get to share that with everyone around us. We get to honor everyone around us and their journey because all mm-hmm. of our journeys are different. You know, mm-hmm. some people won't even awaken in this lifetime and right. that's okay. You know, if you're listening <laughs> and you're like, what is this? Maybe, maybe you won't. And that's all right too. Mm-hmm. 
Um, then we have our solar plexus, which is one of my favorites. <laughs> you have a belly. favorite chakra. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, I just think of the sun when I think of our solar plexus, mm. that's our power source, like our mm-hmm. power energy. It's how we are tapped into other people. So if you're listening and you've heard of like energetic cords before, right? We can have energetic cords to mm-hmm. our families, right? Because we have attachment to them to partners, to past partners, to friends, Mm -hmm. to even people, strangers you pass on the street. Um, That's our, that's kind of our plug into the world around us. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was going through the beginning stages of my awakening, my solar plexus was very weak because I was giving away my power at work. I wasn't standing up for myself. I was very, very depleted energetically because I was just like an open, my solar plexus was just open for anyone to take my energy. <laughs> right. You're like, uh, no vacancy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And now my friend did a, a Reiki session a couple of months ago and she's like, yeah, I just see your solar plexus as a lion, like step away. I got it. Um, so we get to learn, you know, mm-hmm. that's also a, that's the journey too. We get to learn and we get to honor our journeys mm-hmm. and coming from the mindset or those lessons that were painful and empower ourselves. So mm-hmm. then we have the sacral chakra, which is like our womb space or our lower belly. Um, and that's like sensuality, that's mm-hmm. passion. That's um, where kind of we hold feelings and emotions um, and it's also where our creativity lies. Mm-hmm. So if our shock was blocked, we might not feel creative. We might feel stunted or blocked in that. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of where all of those ideas come from. Mm-hmm. Finally is our root chakra. So I actually <laughs> went backwards because we started the root, um, but that's the base of our spine and how safe we feel. So that's Mm -hmm. our basic needs. And our root chakra is kind of the foundation, right? You think of the root of mother earth or Mm -hmm. of the trees, it's the foundation. It's how grounded and anchored we are. And especially after this year, like I found myself doing a lot of root chakra meditations, Mm -hmm. um, for others on my platforms in the beginning of March and April, because Mm -hmm right? If we're feeling uprooted, which most of us felt this year, even if we were empowered, um, (laughs) I found myself helping others feel safe again and feel grounded again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cause that is, that's our basic needs. Like think of shelter food, you know, when you're young, just feeling safe in your home. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great. So those seven chakras and then the other uh, 93, (laughs) It's smaller at ones and, and yeah, at least right in the body itself, make up the energetic body. And so that's how we function energetically, which then also has a, um, it sounds like you were saying has that play back with and forth with the physical body too. That's they, all interconnected. <laughs> yeah. It's, so yeah. you can like, you can research and look up, um, if, if you're feeling certain things, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're feeling ungrounded, maybe your root chakra is imbalanced, or if you're Mm -hmm. feeling really, um, restricted with money or overly materialistic, maybe you have an overactive root chakra because you're too rooted into the world and like possessions. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's fascinating to see when you're overactive or underactive in uh, your chakras, like throat chakra, if you're like overly mm-hmm. aggressive when you communicate or um, don't let others speak, like mm-hmm. that's that could be overactive. Mm-hmm. Wow, so fascinating. I love the chakra system. <laughs> How it like, you know, um, I think that it almost seems there has been like a disconnect from the energetic body and the physical body, right? It's like, well, we can only talk about this and then we can only talk about this. And now people are like, oh yeah, they're they're all working together synergistically in this homeostasis environment, (laughs) right? And so when we actually look at those together or, you know, there's even, there's a mental field too. We have all these different fields. And then when we look at them together, it's through that, that we couldn't realize the harmony or, or um, recognize the harmony within, which I think is um, a really powerful message you were talking about there. 
Yeah, that, you know, the mind, body, soul connection is so powerful. I mean, when you even think of yoga, people doing yoga, right? Afterwards, mm-hmm. you kind of feel relaxed because when with the chakras, when we aren't moving or working with the chakras, that's where stagnancy happens. That's mm-hmm. where energy gets caught. So say, you know, maybe one chakra was blocked when, when you had a traumatic incident as a child mm-hmm. and that energy stayed in your body mm-hmm. and it didn't move. So it manifested as something else. Mm-hmm. And that's when we get to honor all the chakras and really work with them to keep that energy moving because we are a conduit. Our bodies are right. electric. I mean, think of our brains, right? The yep. neurons, like that's mm-hmm. electricity. Yeah. Um, yeah. Our body is basically a being of light, right? Like being connected and holding space in the physical form with all the organs and the shell and the, you know, holding it together. But really all that is just a form of light <laughs> and energy, like you said. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the awakening that you mentioned earlier. So our listeners can, can kind of understand what that is. And if they're experiencing that within themselves, what that might feel like, because I know that can, you know, some people say that an awakening can be this great process. And then other people say like the awakening, like totally rocked my world and it was crazy, you know? So, um, just like the basics of what you mean about that and how the listeners can recognize that might be happening within themselves and, then on a side note, like, do they need to seek out someone for help to help with the awakening process? I think might be another little key that I don't want to miss out there. <laughs> of course. Yes. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. Um, <laughs> so it could say, we could say awakening, we can say ascension. It's really, it's, it's different for everyone. I'll preface that where mm-hmm everyone experiences different symptoms. So what I may experience, maybe someone listening might not experience, Mm -hmm. but an overall definition, like the umbrella definition of an awakening is when we kind of come back home to ourselves, Mm -hmm. right? We unpeel, and this is broad, we unpeel the layers of societal beliefs Mm -hmm. of what we were taught in school of what we were taught from our family, right? Ancestral, genetic, you know, cultural beliefs. Also what we put on ourselves, the Mm -hmm. self-criticism that we put on ourselves, we begin to start analyzing and becoming more aware of how the world works and how, you know, at at times, like for me, it was physical. Like I was getting sick a lot. I was, Mm -hmm. I think I was sick three times and I haven't been sick since, knock on wood. (laughs) Um, But I, I, moving to San Francisco, 3000 miles was kind of what uprooted my chakra Mm -hmm. system, right? And Mm -hmm. uprooted everything that was so comfortable for 31 years. Mm -hmm. And my body reacted to it. My body was rejecting you know, the energy or was purging the energy, right? Mm -hmm. I believe sickness sometimes too is just a purging of Mm. what doesn't belong anymore. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you begin to feel connection to topics that you don't really understand, right? Mm -hmm. So this is following the nudges, what we said before. Right. (laughs) So I found myself, I actually thought for a long time that Reiki was the catalyst But I realized that I had gotten a library card when we moved to San Francisco (laughs) and I just walked in and this card, uh, this book popped out at me called the magic of colors. Mm. And it's a beautiful book. I forgot who, who wrote it, but, um, it talks about the magic of colors and how colors can affect us, can affect our Mm. mood. Right. So if you're waking up and you feel really down, put on yellow to brighten your day, mm-hmm. right? put on something that, that represents happiness. Um, you might be called to different things and you mm-hmm. might not realize it in the moment. This I didn't <laughs> realize till two years later, Right. <laughs> it's this, it's this calling. It's mm-hmm. this soul calling to start questioning your reality, start questioning 
well, not even start, but when you begin to question my nine to five job, mm-hmm. my, nine, my, my relationships, my friendships, my family life, my family dynamics, am I setting boundaries anymore? Am I honoring mm-hmm. myself? Um, am I still wanting to go out to the bar and, and party and socialize? Or mm-hmm. am I feeling called to be secluded and, and solitude? I, I felt that need to um, kind of hermit myself. I was mm. meditating for two plus hours a day. <laughs> my partner, at the, my, my partner at the time was just like, I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> this is good for you. Then that's okay. All right, do what's good um, for you. <laughs> yeah. You start to feel different. You start to feel that there's more to life than you're kind of waking up to your life pretty mm-hmm. much. You're waking up to, to what, what has happened the last X amount of years. Mm. And I really believe so many people this year, 2020 was an awakening Mm -hmm. for so many people. And I feel if anyone, if your listeners are listening, then they probably have awakened because (laughs) our entire world was uprooted, right? Mm -hmm. We have all never experienced a global pandemic. And we began to question, well, people this year began to question their jobs, Mm -hmm. right? Their careers, where they lived. So many people have relocated. Mm -hmm. So it's, it changes, but, and again, it could be physical symptoms as well. Sickness, Mm -hmm. headaches, uh, feeling really hot at night or really cold, like mood swings. Mm -hmm. It can be so many different symptoms, but if you start to see yourself outside of yourself and like observing your life, Mm -hmm. you're probably going through an awakening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And the um, should, is it recommended or should someone seek out, like you mentioned earlier, a spiritual mentor? Is that something that can be helpful for this stage? Like seeing you, for instance, you know, see it helping you go through this awakening stage to understand, to be able to answer questions. I think that's, you know, for me personally, that's what, you know, like questions like, oh my gosh, I was like, what's this? Or like you're saying, like, you know, there's so much information. I think you're like a big sponge <laughs> when you have the awakening process happen. <laughs> Oh yes, for sure. <laughs> if I didn't have Tanya, my Reiki, my Reiki teacher now, my mentor, mm-hmm. I would have felt very secluded, very alone. Mm. Um, because it it can also be called dark night of the soul because you feel even if you do have mentor mentors make it feel less alone. Um, right. because I remember after well, even my first Reiki session with her, you know, talking about all these things. And just feeling understood, mm-hmm. you know, feeling seen. And I, I think feeling understood, seen and heard is what every human, you know, we just, we all deserve that. And we all crave mm-hmm. that in this life to not feel like an alien, to not feel mm-hmm. that there's something wrong with me. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said before, you know, people, there's a great meme too of like what we think awakening looks like. And it's just like, <laughs> meditating on a rock right, and yeah. the sun shining <laughs> on you and what it really is and it can look messy right your your entire mm-hmm. life is changing mm-hmm. because your body is changing your you're bringing more light into your body um so yeah soul mentors are really awesome um receiving reiki healings um you know any and it, it's different for everyone you know reiki mm-hmm. was the catalyst of my awakening but For some people, it's like Kundalini yoga. For some others, it's uh, regular regular yoga. For others, Mm -hmm. it's moving somewhere. Mm -hmm. But yes, to and now it's it's so much more mainstream to find someone and to feel, especially after this year, to feel that it's not crazy. (laughs) I mean, I've I've gotten pat over the the fact of people finding my Instagram. You know, back back when I started it two years ago, friends and family started finding me and they're like, what is this? Like, I love, <laughs> I love your shares. And I'm like, oh gosh, like you found me like, no, no, I'm just, I'm just sharing my writings. Mm. Um, and now I, I openly speak about it because that's also part of why we're here to mm-hmm. learn 
and to to go through the lessons and then to teach and to guide others and when we don't share our story, when we don't share our vulnerabilities and how mm. open we are, mm-hmm. that's when we block ourselves off from opening the door for others uh, or mm-hmm. for opening the space for others to share their stories. It's mm-hmm. kind of like, um, you, you know, we all get to activate each other. We all mm-hmm. get to help each other and, the people that are meant to find you cannot find you if you are hiding out. (laughs) That's right. If you're under the rock, they're not going to know where to look. (laughs) Um, Okay. That was a great explanation of kind of like what the awakening process is. And I, I think it's really helpful for people that might be feeling, you know, something's happening and not quite be aware of it even, you know, just like, and it can be hard when you're changing so much and you've created, you know, like you were saying, like the family and all of your, this life. And then you're, then you're realizing like, wait, none of that really is me anymore. And that I think can be the scary, you know, quote unquote part for people when that, when that happens. So listeners, if you're out there listening, which we know you are, <laughs> cause you, like Michelle said, if you're listening, this is for you. Um, then seek out someone who can help guide you and know that we are all here to support each other in the process, like you said, activating the awakening. <laughs> um, okay, let's shift and talk about, so I'd like to talk a little bit about like the DNA aspect of the awakening, which is a little bit different than what we were just talking about. So you talked about earlier how our body is made up of energy and our cells are all energy. And within that, like we have the DNA, which you know, is, is goes through our energetic body, goes through our DNA, through our our genetic bloodline, all of that. So in the awakening process, is there a shift in the DNA? I think that's my big question here. So, you know, a lot, there was, it used to be a thought process that the DNA never changed. Right. And I think now people are waking up and realizing that actually, especially during the awakening process that our DNA can possibly shift. And I'd love for you to talk about that and give the listeners like your thoughts about that and about, um, can you work with, um, different tools to change your DNA? Yes. Great question. (laughs) Um, so there's this thing called junk DNA. I don't know if you've heard of it before, no. <laughs> but we, you know, we are, we are taught that we're meant to, you know, go to school, get a job, get married, have children, you know, be successful. <laughs> yes. Do all these things and not really question. Mm. Right. So um, there's this thing called junk DNA where we get to it's like dormant Mm. right so it's not I maybe it does change as well because I do believe that you know through foods or through diet or through mindset and different things we can change our DNA but -hmm. it's also an activation Mm. of this dormant Mm -hmm. junk DNA that scientists have just said well it's it doesn't matter or it's you know, you, we only use 10% of our brains, right? Like obsolete then, DNA. <laughs> like yeah. we don't need that. <laughs> and then you're like, well, what happens to the 90% of our brain? You know, right. what, Hello in there. why isn't it working? <laughs> so it's kind of like that, where we get to wake up that DNA, we get to, um, we get to open it up to, Mm. to gifts, because I I truly believe that we are all intuitive and we are all psychic. I Mm -hmm. really believe that in my soul. Um, but that because of our society, because of what they put in our water of, you know, think of all Mm -hmm. the things that we don't really have control over Mm -hmm. in our world and everyone just believes, okay, it is what it is but we get to research, we get to look at, and this is also part of awakening, questioning, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, waking up to what is this world? What are they doing? What are they putting in our food? Mm -hmm. You know, you look at FDA, you look at other countries, even from the U S and the chemicals are so different Mm -hmm. in our foods than in other countries. And you just start to 
wonder like what is that affecting and it's affecting mm-hmm. our dna it's affecting the dormancy of of who we are and and the gifts that that are really our birthright you know i believe everyone can tap into channeling into intuition into mindset of of believing that you can achieve anything you want in this life. Mm -hmm. And we were not taught that we were taught, you know, the, the salary is, is the ceiling high and yeah, you can only work this long and then you retire and you only get to make this amount of money. Mm -hmm. And I, over the last two years have shifted in that (laughs) mindset of, no, I, I get to empower myself. Mm-hmm. I get to believe the sky is the limit and mm. I get to visualize and manifest. And I think that's part of activating the DNA, activating the dormant DNA. Mm. And it's really doing things that we love. You know, for so many of us, we are so disconnected. Like you said before, we're there's a disconnect from our energy body and our physical body, but there's also a disconnect from our inner child. Mm. You know, we are work, 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 let's go like this rat race, this, this day in this day out, this, um, robotic rote way of living, Mm -hmm. but we get to tap into joy. We get to tap into the things that light us up. Mm -hmm. And that's also following the nudges, following the things that just, allow you to be in your essence, allow you to be truly who you are. And there's so many people on this planet who are still living in fear and are still living in, in believing that they're not in control of their joy. They're not in Mm -hmm. control of their lives in that way. And Mm -hmm. I really believe inner child is a beautiful way to activate that DNA. Like Mm -hmm. thinking that this is a great, you know, prompt for anyone listening, think of what you loved doing when you were four years old or Mm -hmm. five years old, you know, painting, dancing, uh, swinging on the swings, you (laughs) know, playing in the dirt, just doing things that light you up Mm -hmm. to activate that DNA again, because again, it's lay, it's been laid dormant since Mm -hmm. you were six or seven years old, since you Mm -hmm. were brought into the world, into society. It happened to me. I Mm -hmm. was so outgoing, so open. And then school hit and I was like, nope, (laughs) this is not what I'm doing. I I can't trust the world. And now I'm back to five-year-old Michelle where (laughs) I'm really outgoing and I love connecting and I love sharing and I love being me. And we, we get to do that. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And I really liked how you were talking about like the the DNA is an activated from that inner child place with the joy, you know, and that's so true. And are there specific, like, is meditation a good way for listeners to tune into that DNA? Is there like a, a visualization that can, you know, be done or something like that? I guess is what I'm asking something, you know, when, how do you op- turn the key, <laughs> right? Um, um, to activate, to awaken that DNA. Is there, is that, I don't even know if you know the answer to that question, but is there like, you know, something, a tool that our listeners can use at home, whether that's doing some basic meditations or is it just getting out there, like you said, and being that five-year-old and, you know, doing flips in the yard? <laughs> yeah, I think it, it, again, it's, it's different for everyone. I know meditation isn't for everyone, mm-hmm. but I think visualization is so powerful. Our minds are so powerful. We, again, we're not taught that our minds were powerful. We, whether we believe something to be true or not, it's happening, right? If we believe negative thoughts, they come true because our mm-hmm. mind will believe they come true. Mm-hmm. So visualizing, you know, you as a young child, because sometimes it won't come naturally. So kind of sitting in a meditation, visualizing, like, what am I wearing? What am I doing? Where mm-hmm. am I? Who am I with? Mm -hmm. or uh, writing to your inner child, Mm -hmm. you know, or taking a photo from your childhood and putting it on your desk and Mm -hmm. and looking at it every day, you know, because our inner child is still with us on Mm -hmm. a different frequency. You know, our, our future selves are with us on a different frequency. We have Mm -hmm. all of the aspects of us here 
and it's just kind of tuning into to them. Mm. So yeah, I, I'm a very visual person. So I love looking at five-year-old Michelle and, and saying, Hey, what do you want to do today? Or, right. <laughs> um, you know, journal prompts, journaling is really beautiful. That mm-hmm. was one of the beginning rituals I kind of did in the beginning. I started a gratitude journal, you know, channeling into that gratitude frequency mm-hmm. is also a way to activate our DNA because mm-hmm. for so many of us at times we feel like we're out of control or, or we our human monkey brains look <laughs> to the negative, right? We always look to what's not working in our lives and it's natural. It's how we've been programmed, right. but we get to flip the script. There's research that says, if you write down gratitude for 21 days, you begin to rewire your brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, it's a, it's amazing. Like you, how you said our brain is so powerful, you know, and we can, dream anything we want to. And I really liked how you were saying, you know, it's like the re the reprogramming, which I think is part of that, what conversation we were talking about, the activating the DNA and that you call it the junk, the junk DNA, um, and turning on that DNA that's been dormant or that's been asleep. And I think that's the, the physical and the emotional and the energetic side, like all coming together in this new, like harmonious way and then activating DNA, which I think is what we're seeing as you were mentioning too, with the 2020 and the pandemic is that people are being activated in a different way. Like we're realizing like, well, okay, we can't really, this isn't working. (laughs) So as you said, like activating the intuition and activating that, that DNA that has been, because DNA is not just physical, which I think a lot of people think about it in that form, it's an energetic form. It's light. It's a ray of light that then is in the cell to assist us in not just a physical form, but in an energetic form too. (laughs) Um, Okay. So yeah. And some tools you said were um, meditation and journaling, which I love both of those tools myself and drawing, you know, if you're whatever, I think you were saying, Michelle's whatever your like passion is like for me, I love to cook. Like for me, that's like, you know, if I need to get into my groove, I'm like, "Mm, what should I make today? (laughs) You know? So whatever that passion is, that's a way to activate yourself um, and find that joy and fun again. (laughs) As you were and saying. getting out in nature too, mm-hmm. you know, nature has a zero point frequency. Yeah. So when we're out in nature, we, since we are nature, mm-hmm. we also come back to our zero point. Uh, mm-hmm. We become calmer. We, co- we, we become more aligned with our, our true state, mm-hmm. like our true bliss. So getting out, you know, they always recommend like 15 minutes of sunlight a day. Mm-hmm. We're, we're pretty much house plants, right? right. When you think about it with just emotions. We, right. <laughs> we need sunlight too. And that's a beautiful, also, that's also a beautiful way to activate your DNA. The, mm-hmm. the sun this year too is activated. It's going yeah. through its, its own awakening. Mm-hmm. Earth is going through her own awakening. Mm-hmm. So we are part of earth. We're part of this universe and um, we get to activate each other. So when we sit outside in the sun, when we sit under a tree, you know, just connecting with nature, going for a walk, even if you're not, I grew up in a city So I wasn't around nature all the time, but even just going for a 15, 20 minute walk in the fresh Mm -hmm. air is activating. Right. Yeah, that's so true. And our cells and body needs so much of that sunlight and oxygen to be able to function. (laughs) Right. And water, (laughs) make sure you're drinking water out there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Our cells need water for clearing (laughs) and activation too. water. So key. Um, Okay. So it sounds like when people are having this awakening process that um, the DNA can, is part of that activation process. Um, and so let's shift gears a little bit and talk about your, um, empowerment groups with women. Cause I'd like to kind of like shift that for our women listeners and to talk about why it's so important, especially right now for women to have this community. Cause I think that's really a key aspect that I love about you is that you're creating this, um, womb, so to speak, or this container is a better word for women who are in this awakening process or are learning about it. Don't even know, but why is it so important right now for women to have this, um, union, this bond of a community created or 
create this community bond in their life? Mm, great question. Um, community is so important to ourselves as well. Mm. We, you know, when we think back to, well, besides the U.S. too, because other countries have commun- more community, but mm-hmm. we are programmed to be around others socially. Mm-hmm. We're social creatures. And 2020, you know, we haven't had those opportunities. Thank goodness for technology. You know, the plus <laughs> side of technology is that we get to feel less alone. Mm. You know, I just see um, social media, right? Instagram, Facebook, there's Mm -hmm. just so much that people are able to tune into to like-minded souls, Mm -hmm. to others who get them on a soul level. Mm. And I began women's circles. I began new moon circles Mm -hmm. uh, a year and a half ago. And I didn't set out to do this. I, it was two <laughs> months after my Reiki one certification. And I just had a hit, an intuitive hit in the middle of the night. And a month later, had my first circle around the new moon. I've always loved the moon. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe, especially as women, we are very tied to the moon, connected mm-hmm. to the moon. Just think of our cycles. It's very similar. Mm-hmm. And especially this year alone, Mm. that community, that knowing that we're not alone. So I have, I've continued these moon circles for a year and a half. And I've also started virtual circles last August. So Mm -hmm. I I guess I got a hit from pre-pandemic, like you got to (laughs) start doing these virtually. Right. Get prepared. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I also had a lot of friends on the East coast where Mm -hmm. I grew up that were interested in, in joining my circles, but they weren't in California. So mm-hmm. it's imperative that you find others who are, who have gone through what you're going through or who can understand you without you having to explain yourself. Mm. And I think that's so important. You know, the soul conversations, like I'm not a small talker. <laughs> I love getting deep. I have a lot of Scorpio in my chart. So <laughs> I, there's no taboo topic for me. And I guess with that, I, you know, I'm a channel for creating that sacred space, Mm. for creating that, that safe space for others to show up as they are. I always Mm -hmm. say, come as you are. There's no glitz or glamour. Like we are all, (laughs) you know, this is just a facade and it's been, you know, especially with sisterhood, we mm. come from a lot of, I don't want to say genetic programming, but um, just ancestral programming mm-hmm. from going back to like the witch trials, mm-hmm. right, of persecution, of tattletaling on each other, you know, women not trusting each other, you see gossip, and you see bullying, and you see women just not not honoring one each other, one another, and mm. uh, seeing each other as a competition. Mm-hmm. And I am a big advocate of collaboration over competition because I believe that we all have our unique gifts and unique blueprint in this world. And I have women that come on to now. I have full moon circles as well, so I do mm-hmm. full moon, full moon. And I started a monthly membership called the Sisterhood in April. And that is just a safe space for women who are who are awakening, who are maybe already activated, but who want to talk to others about their process, about mm-hmm. their rituals that they do every day. And we set intentions together and it's, it's important when we set intentions out loud in groups, Mm -hmm. because the intentions are amplified, the manifestations Mm -hmm. are amplified, the energy, you know, imagine like one person in their room, you see a light beamed out in the universe, but then you can imagine energetically, even if we are like just the two of us on this Mm -hmm. call, we're not physically together, but energetically we are. Mm -hmm. And 
we're setting an even bigger amplification out into the universe of positivity, of intention, mm -hmm. of seeing each other as sacred mirrors. Mm. And I, I love, I don't even see it as work. I really don't because it's fun. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's just beautiful to witness women stepping into their power, mm. into who they are, into their gifts that are coming up and just having that support. Mm. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. It's, it, I really liked that aspect of, you know, the, it is so important for us to realize that there's been a lot of um, angst, I guess you could say, you know, within our female community from long time ago. And, and now I think the communities around the world are realizing that, you know, that's just, it's not serving us as women. <laughs> we need to help each other and empower us to be um, a better voice, a bigger footprint on the planet, <laughs> I guess, in a positive way. Um, uh, what was I going to ask you? Oh, yes. So what do you think, um, why do you think women are afraid to like step out of that? And I think this is like a, the put piggybacking on what you were just saying. I am afraid to step out and have their voice. Like you were talking about the fifth chakra before and that communication. And why is it so important now for them to step forward and to, you know, be out of their spiritual closet and to just, I don't know, let it all hang out. <laughs> Well, first for themselves, right? right? For their their own empowerment. And I think it's it's scary. I remember feeling mm. really scared. I remember attending my first women's circle back in New York when I was in my late in my early uh, mid to late twenties mm -hmm. and thinking, why am I here? What am I doing? Mm. Um so I always begin that too. Like I was scared too. I, I facilitate <laughs> circles. I facilitate soul sessions. I facilitate a sisterhood and I lead and I put myself out there, but I was scared. So mm. I think it's first it's judgment, right? Mm -hmm. um, people are, we're human. We're, we're afraid of being judged. We're afraid of what others will say, especially people who have known us forever, mm -hmm. our friends, our family who mm -hmm. might not understand the new Michelle or might not understand the new person that mm -hmm. is, is being vocal and is speaking their truth. And it's that fear from others who have known us for a long time. Mm -hmm. I remember, um, I was lucky enough that most of my friends and family were supportive, but I remember mm -hmm. their friends saying, what happened to Michelle? Like she mm -hmm. moved to California and she's doing all this weird <laughs> stuff. And I took it with a grain of salt. I said, you know, I'm, I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And then you also look to see who's, who's talking, right. It's the people right. that haven't done that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think a lot of women are nervous of, of their power. I think that's mm -hmm. it too. We're afraid of our own power. I was afraid of my own power. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think it's when we do step out, that's, that's the beauty, right. To, mm -hmm. to have community, to have others say, yes, like you can do this. You are, right. you are pot, like you're a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And women, especially, you know, we've lived in this toxic patriarchy, Mm -hmm. for so long toxic masculinity because yeah. masculinity isn't toxic we all have divine mm -hmm. masculine within us and that's actually holding space for others right but it's been ruled by greed it's been mm -hmm. ruled by um money by you know craving that success and success is beautiful we all we all deserve success but it's how you get there right it's, right it's how honest are you with yourself um so the matriarchy is rising, you know, mm -hmm. we need women to, to come out of their shells and to share their truth and share their stories because mm -hmm. the stories are what heal other people, right? When we share right. our wounds, when we share the things that have happened to us. Um, and I think that started a few years ago with the woman's movement, you know, of, mm -hmm. of being heard about the abuse, about speaking up for ourselves. And mm -hmm. it's time for us to rise. I, right. it's, 
I, and I, I've seen so many women over this past year alone, you know, step mm-hmm. into their calling, doing circles or, you know, getting certified in whatever feels good to them or just speaking mm-hmm. their truth alone. You don't have to right. be on this path of like, I have to be <laughs> like this. It's, it's just standing up for yourself. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's really important for our listeners to hear too, is that, you know, everybody has a different path. Um, and yours might not be like fireworks and, <laughs> and sparklers, but be who you are, <laughs> be the voice that you need to be and speak out to have fun and to live your life, I think is, is key. Um, and so in the women's circles, what does, um, so women are showing up in this virtual, um, environment. And so what does that look like? Can you talk through just kind of like the basics of, of, of what that, what the, um, what am I trying to say? Like, uh, okay. So the women arrive and then what is the ceremony? I guess that's what I'm, you know, can you just like give us a little like taster (laughs) of what that would be like in the, um, one of the new moon circles? (laughs) Yeah, of course. Um, so I always, especially virtually now, Mm -hmm. um, it's still energy. So I always set an intention before, before every call, before every phone call, before Mm -hmm. I do anything, I always set the intention to clear the energy, to clear Mm -hmm. the space. Um, because even if we are on a computer, we are sharing energy. Right. And (laughs) computers are energy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I, call well I introduce myself and and where what I what I do and why I started circles and um then I kind of ground the energy right because mm. they're usually at night um mm-hmm. they and it's after a long day you know we're all on computers all day long for most of us and I ground the energy so I do like mm. a mini grounding meditation and visualization to set the tone and set the intention Mm -hmm. for Mm -hmm. the container. Mm -hmm. And when I do this, I'm also calling in our higher selves, calling in the angels, calling in our spirit guides, Mm -hmm. calling in, you know, the ancestors of the land that we live on. I Mm -hmm. am really deeply connected to that as well. And I say, you know, imagine, visualize us all sitting in a, in a physical circle Mm. because, um, I believe visualizations are important. I believe that on a plane somewhere, you know, on a physical plane somewhere we are Mm -hmm. in, in circle with one another physically. And then we get to, I usually have a few question prompts for anyone Mm -hmm. that's new. So we kind of call in uh, where we live, what our name is, like why right. we joined, um, and then ask how everyone is feeling, right? That's such a, a potent question these right. days. <laughs> yeah. How are you feeling in this moment? Not even right. today. Um, <laughs> and I also ask everyone to call in a woman in their life. And mm. this I find really powerful, um, anyone that has passed on or Mm. anyone that's alive that, you know, maybe needs our energy tonight, or maybe we can call in for their potent energy. Mm. And then I lead everyone through a Reiki infused meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, and those are always intuitively guided. I just determine, you know, the, the feel of the women on the call. Mm -hmm. And then we journal, we, we journal about, um, if it's new moon, we're setting intentions, Mm -hmm. you know, I intend that I am, and we manifest like what we want to happen in our lives. Um, you know, new moons are all about resetting, recharging right (laughs) to ourselves. If it's full moon releasing, those are a little Mm -hmm. more fiery. Like what are we letting go of? What are we (laughs) on? I'm done with that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and then we share. And I think that's like one of my favorite parts is that Mm. there's no time limit. You know, it's an hour and a half call. We usually end on time, but (laughs) if you're sharing, if you're venting, if you're going through something, we've had people losing loved ones. We've had Mm. people going through breakups. We've had people going through so many different things and just being so open. Mm. Um, So that happens. Uh, And then, or people just share their intentions. It's a very... Mm you know, I centered around the moon, but it turns into, Hey, what's going on in your life? Like this Mm. is, there aren't, they're beginning to be more spaces that are safe like this, but there aren't enough yet. 
And right. um, then, I, then I talk about the moon energy. So, mm-hmm. you know, we just had new moon in Libra. So I talk mm-hmm. about like the Libra energy, what it means for us. And I pull some cards, like Oracle cards, mm. and then we close out the circle. So it's, it's really beautiful. And there's an agenda, but we, we also go with the flow and allow like the divine feminine to, to take over. And there's always a theme. That's mm-hmm. what I find fascinating for doing this for a year and a half is that the women are usually all kind of going through something collectively. And it's mm. very interesting to observe and to feel into. Mm, Wow, that sounds so powerful. And thank you for the explanation. I think it's really important for listeners to hear that because, you know, a lot of them don't know what the experience would be like. And um, I'm a member of um, a woman's group as you are. And, you know, it's, it's, um, sometimes it's hard to explain or hard to grasp. And you did a great job of explaining that and yours sounds wonderful. And um, to sign up and find out more information, they can go to your website, right? You dot the power within. Yeah, Instagram. Instagram is uh, you dot the power within and my website is you the power within. Okay. The website doesn't have a dot. It's just that. So, sorry. Yeah. Okay. No, it's so okay. You the power within is a website and the, to follow you on Instagram, it's you dot the power within Yeah. <laughs> you, the power within. <laughs> um, that's great. And then you also have a, um, a Facebook, um, group, right. With, and these are the members of the star sister, star, star, star sisterhood. Sister Star. Yeah. It's just, it's a little. It's a it's starhood. A That's what it is. Sisterhood. It's a starhood. Um, yeah. So when you join the sisterhood, which mm. I have been doing the moon circles as drop in, like anyone can drop in whenever. Mm-hmm. Um, but beginning January, I will have, it'll be exclusive for sisterhood members. Oh, so nice. if you're thinking of um, dipping your toes into a woman's mm-hmm. circle, you can drop in anytime. Our next circle is next Friday for full moon and Taurus. Yeah, the blue moon. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then the sisterhood is access to the moon circles. Uh, we have a monthly group call. Sometimes I have a guest speaker last month. I had my Reiki teacher on talking oh, about nice. crystals. That's great. Yeah. And then we have a Facebook group. Um, I have a private Facebook group for the sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And then I have a free Facebook group called soul over matter, like mind over matter, but soul over matter. Nice. Um, And that's where sometimes I'll like drop in and give a live meditation or I just share about um, energy and that's for men and women. I'm actually um, in an astro- astrological chart reading, mm-hmm. I was told like, I would have some men drop in. So, um, even in, I have a, I just started a chakra course two mm-hmm. weeks ago, men that have joined. So it's been fascinating. I see my business pivoting a little bit, mm-hmm. but I will always have the sisterhood. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I mean, we, I think there's a lot of men that are on that, um, shift, You know, we don't want to um, disclude or, you know, not have them included in the shift on the planet. Um, There's a difference, I think, with the women having a group of all women, but at the same time, the male and the female energy are so important on the planet, especially, you know, when we're thinking about our, our spirit guides and having everybody come together and having that male figure hold the container is so important, which I I really like that. Um, That's great. I'm glad you're doing that. Um, okay. One last question. Um, I could think we could talk forever, but I know know your time is valuable. (laughs) Um, so if you had an unlimited budget right now, what would you do that would have the biggest impact on the planet? Mm, Beautiful question. I have big dreams of creating a retreat center Mm -hmm. and also an animal sanctuary. I have such an affinity for animals Mm. and especially abused animals. And I just see myself having this retreat center where people can come receive healings, receive, you know, circles, just being, you know, just turn off, like tune out and tune in Mm -hmm. to themselves. 
And um, I would also love to travel all over the world mm-hmm. and um, hopefully in the near future. <laughs> right. Um, it's not, not going to be too far away. <laughs> yes. And hold retreats globally. Like mm-hmm. that is another, another dream of mine mm-hmm. is to, to access different parts of the globe, because I also believe that there's different energy um, in the land of different mm-hmm. places. And when we go there, sometimes it activates parts of us, but also sometimes we activate the land. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I just got this like whole like visualization of the planet being like these little like circuit pods, you know, where it's like ding, 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 like all lit up. So yeah, I think the creating, I love that creating the retreat idea and traveling to different places. I think that's one of the ways you know, um, as I've been t- doing these podcasts, a lot of people have that kind of like, I would love to have a center, you know, and there's so many great aspects of that. And if, I think if we can, I don't know, come together in a way where like, here you go, start their center here. And then it's connected to this one over here and it's connected to this one over here, you know, where it's just um, unlimited funding for healing centers around the world. Like that would be, that's, that's my dream. <laughs> unlimited healing centers around the world <laughs> yes and accessible to everyone right. you know, there's so many mm-hmm. cultures that do not have the money or the resources for healing and mm. I would love would love to have a nonprofit center mm. for for everyone to because it's our birthright it, I believe mm. everyone could not everyone deserves to heal and to mm. heal their family lines as mm-hmm. well yeah. And there's so many healers that need a place to work too, that want, you know, that want to be helping people. And then they're, like you said earlier, teaching others how to heal. So it's like this whole inner network that we're growing, which I love. <laughs> One day I see One it day. happening. I know everyone has, we yeah. all have the same dreams. Like I'm not, yeah, everyone like wants to travel, mm. wants to have centers. I'm like, this is it. This is our right. future somewhere. I know yeah. it's happening. It's, it's happening. We just created it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, Michelle, it's been such a joy to have you on the Genetic Genius today. And I look forward to future conversations as we both travel and meet in other realms around the world. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun. You're welcome.